Hulk, it's not easy being Green Hogan. The man whose nose candy would give Jean-Claude Van Damme a run for his money. A man who currently looks like a roided up sea turtle without a shell. I just want to hand feed him lettuce, but we all know he would bite your finger. But we continue our journey of his love affair with a 40 foot long sea vessel and no, I am not talking about his mustache because this is Red Eye Reviews. We start back in the land of camels and rugs. Just ignore the fact that they all look to be Florida locals. It's not Florida, okay? You know, it's like when white people live in Hawaii for several years. I think that means they're natives. Pretty sure that's how that works. But last time their bartender got kidnapped, she's getting forced into a marriage. So we went to rescue her. I wonder what that son of a Bialy is doing to her. Our boys creep through the streets carrying guns, and nobody seems to notice or care. Uh, you know what it is? My mistake. They're wearing camo. (laughs) Yeah, of course, they're gonna blend right in. They also do a great job giving us super intense music to accompany our calm walking through the streets. I don't need to know how I'm supposed to feel because the music tells me how I'm supposed to feel. But while sneaking around, I guess it was pretty obvious that they were there because they get caught in a giant net. Oh, well, don't sweat it, guys. We're on the bride side. I bet you're going to leave that part of the story out when you tell your friends later. So they're thrown in a cell with electrified bars. How about a phone call? <laughs> we cut to the wedding to see that the man forgets that he needs to read out loud. I'm now going to read from the ceremonial book, Northern Tenenatia. I get it, you just learned how to read quietly, and you're pretty stoked about it, I understand. Also, way to make a wedding even more boring than it already is. So their guard is eating the food he eats every day, and these two foreigners now tell him to be concerned about the food that he eats every day. I imagine they've all been inoculated for trichondinosis anyways, wouldn't you? That lays its eggs in certain foods, lamb. Rice, uh, stuff like that. I don't think they need to worry, do they? It's like the local news. Could there be E. coli in your food? Find out at 11. And he's like, well, now I'm worried. I wasn't, you know, for the last 40 years of my life, but today I am. So he asks them to inspect his food for parasites. And then he leaves them alone with his food. Voila. (laughs) Trelawney's hot sauce. Why does our man travel with hot sauce in his back pocket? I don't know, gives you a good chance of a spicy booty. Hey, maybe he's just putting it close to the thing that's going to burn later anyways. Also, why couldn't they have simply kicked the door down to start? Then we wouldn't have been able to use pocket sauce. So they run back to the wedding. They jump between roofs again using the exact same footage because that stunt was so cool the first time, we need to show you a second time. But we see the wedding is in full speed. Our boys rappel down into the ceremony. Where do they get rappel kits from? We don't know. They disappear pretty much instantly. We would much rather waste all of our bullets killing the plants in the room that somebody has been watering and doing a pretty good job if I may be so bold. So Hulkster gets in a fight with the giant man. It goes back and forth until eventually he bullies him like a big brother would. Surrender! And then somehow by defeating this dude, we're now elected warlord of the city. 
And I guess that comes with half a dozen Disney princesses and a wine and cheese platter. Honestly, it's not a bad deal if you ask me. Don't see how we're going to get Kelly past these guards. We do see my favorite people, the, the totally legit local guards. They're still here. Ah, that mustache looks really good on you, my dude. But as part of the warlord deal, he has handed his first wife. Daughters of kings invariably look like Dick Butkus. And then, as if Hulk Hogan could be any less appealing of a person, he acts like Wolverine and he, he sniffs her. Spence, wake up and smell the tabbouleh. This is not an option. I don't care what anybody says. Every time in a movie a dude sniffs a girl's hair, it's creepy as shit. Just don't do that. They then give our friend the other six women, and he basically has a schlong-based aneurysm. So now, with the power of boners, we are 100% committed to living here forever. We find us a hat. We run in slow motion with all of our ladies. They, um, uh, slowly undress him. God, what is happening? This show uh, has really turned into something I was not expecting to see today. But we see it was all a daydream. We cut back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. Turns out in order to have these women, they would need to uh, de-seed his melons. And that ain't happening. So we begin fighting our way out of this place. Once again, running into the mini camels. That is probably the major export of this village, if I had to guess. We even use one as the most effective roadblock this side of the Mississippi. They run some more. They fight some more. It's honestly shocking how boring such a scene could be given how exciting the music tries convincing us otherwise. They do manage to climb up high and corner themselves like good trained people would do. Thank God these old villages always have zip lines attached to various tall structures for this exact situation. <laughs> So trapped up there, our two guys come to a realization. They're like, okay, we've seen Aladdin, right? And come on, this, this place is basically like the same. However, we don't have a monkey and a fez, but we do have a magic carpet. Let's do it. So they leap off the building, and as it turns out, it was not a magic carpet, and carpets make terrible flying devices. But they somehow survive this, and they manage to get back to their boat. We also see that when they speed away, the cameraman does his best to not pan up and reveal the green, lush land of Florida. No, good. Come on. Come on, we're in Saudi Arabia. Okay, we're, we're nowhere near Disney World. Stop asking. So we take off in the magic school bus. They proceed to shoot all the guns at us. At some point, the director told our man Hulk that he needs to emote more. And he does his best. Whoa, man. This is just like just a dream. I don't know, Bruce, but if you take out the hornet's nest, I can just a dream. We get aced. Like I told Jess, you can change a dream. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's... That's... Well, that's all we're gonna get. I don't want to do another take. Let's just move on. And then after we destroy this one base, our boat reveals a piece of crucial information. Target locked. Ignition of underground fuel line. Full destruction of multiple weaponry. I don't know. What, was it going to tell us about this convenient base destruction pipeline before we took the shot? 
Probably not. Maybe Optimus Prime isn't 100% on our side. Folks, stop trusting technology so much. They then initiate hyperspeed, which they literally call hyperspeed. Hey, we have to do hyperspeed. Starting ROC for hyperspeed. Routine of command for hyperspeed activated. And that just means we fast forward the footage, somehow not breaking everybody's spines to pieces in the boat. Yeah, their bodies might make it home, but they're going to be about six inches shorter. Cut back to the resort. We see our child. Especially thanks to your information. Just an adorable couple. Really, really is. Our episode ends with us back at the bar, just like the good old days. Sometimes you want to go to a place where everybody knows your name. Then to remind her of the terrible decision she made last episode, we all give her roses. Yeah, we bought a dozen roses for this two-part episode, and we're going to use them as often as we can. Also, our hot sauce survived in our back pocket, which is something I couldn't care less about. But that is it, so let's head on over to Red Eye Reacts. Whoa! Look at that, man! Okay, I just try to stay away. It's just so boring. Did you go to the Kronk school for hiding from people? How about a phone call? Surprise! We do have electricity. <laughs> what time is it? Spence, that's the third time you've done that to me, okay? The bit's getting a little bit old. Wait a minute! Now wait a minute! Now wait a minute! Careful, Spence. I've seen this in movies. Daughters of kings invariably look like Dick Butkus. Did you say we were going to escape on a flying carpet? Bro, you're about 50 bullets short of an assault rifle. You're trying to tell me we're going to fly out of here on a magic carpet? Did you get married? No. What I got, though, was an education. Yeah. Did you learn that you shouldn't run away with strangers who say you could be a princess? Miss, that is how you give your grandma's retirement fund to some fake dude on the internet. That is all of it. Thank you so much for watching. As always, thank you to the Patreon community. They've picked like three of the past five things we've watched. So if you've liked those and you want to be a part of that experience, where you get to tell me what to do and say and work me like a little puppet. And not in the hand puppet way. Get your mind out of the gutters and out of my, uh, anyways. There's a link down below to support me that way, which... Support brings a whole new meaning when you talk about hand puppets. It really does. Down below. Discord community down below and a merch store down below. I will see you next time. And until then, stay happy and stay healthy. Spence, wake up and smell the tabbouleh. This is not an option.